what's been the challenges that you've had in real estate development? Well, the challenges are, are, are plentiful. Um, I tell my, my team all the time that, yeah, we're real estate developers, developers, but we're really problem solvers. Mm -hmm. And those problems go from, you know, getting a site, rezoning, you know, entitlements, dealing with city officials, state government, all of the, pro the process of building and putting together a project. But then there are other challenges that are more systemic in nature. Yeah. And those challenges evolve around the lack of people of color and African-Americans being in this space. Yeah. Um, and that in itself is a challenge. Oftentimes, um, I, when I put projects together, I am the only person of color in the room from the architects, from the engineers, from the contractors, from all of the players that are involved. And that's unfortunate. And those are some things that I personally want to work on trying to um, improve in this space. So I'm glad you brought that up because, <laughs> you know, in a lot of industries, like even my industry, you know, I think blacks specifically are held to a different standard. Oh, without question. Without question. <laughs> in the general population. So with that, I mean, as a black real estate developer, sure. I mean, what have been some of those major challenges that you've had? Well, to your point, I mean, we are held to a higher standard, even though we are typically coming into industries where we didn't have the experience or the historical background right. with folks bringing us into it. We kind of learn on the job. So when we, um, as people of color, and as you noted, more specifically African-Americans, make mistakes. Right. Um, those mistakes are magnified much larger than my counterpart making the exact same mistake would be. Right. I, I think about, um, you know, it's a very prominent businessman in the city who made a mistake. And of course, he's white, made a mistake, had to go away for a little bit, mm -hmm. came out. Now he's, you know, one of the top business folks in, in our region. Mm -hmm. um, but he's never a one above the fold. He's never mentioned in terms of his history. Certainly. Um, when it comes to um, the challenges he had in the past. Certainly. But if you take uh, another business owner, a, a young man, a brother, I'm not going to say his name, but he's doing really well now mm -hmm. um, in project management. But every time he's mentioned his history is mentioned. Certainly. There's definitely a double standard. Oh, it's no question about that. I personally have had that experience. I mean, I had a project 16 years ago doing one of the worst economic uh, environments that we've seen as a country back in 2008. Project went up, upside down. Um, it um, went into a lot of civil, civil litigation at the time. It was, I don't know, a 13 or $14 million project. Um, a lot of civil litigation, which ultimately led to criminal litigation mm -hmm. because my my organization was winning on the civil side. Mm -hmm. So since we were winning on the civil side, my counterparts, um, uh, my other brother, as I call them, <laughs> decided that they wanted to engage some of their friends and buddies on the criminal side. And so my my situation went from civil to criminal. Um, and so those were some battles that I had to fight and overcome. And to this day, 16 years later, I'm still fighting those battles and trying to overcome issues that occurred 16 years ago um, in spite of the things that we have been able to do successfully since that time. So how do you wake up in the morning realizing that you still have that challenge that you have to overcome? You know, I am probably what you would call a hopeless optimistic. 